we are stepping up the level of our services. Our goal is to treat your loved ones with the respect they deserve. We are taking our services to new heights. We are stepping in a new direction. Step into the new millennium with Golden Gate Fund, where service begins and never ends. Hello and welcome to Ask the Undertaker, an open, honest look at the funeral service brought to you by Golden Gate for your home and crematory. With facilities in Fort Worth, Texas, Dallas, Texas, and Tallulah, Louisiana. I'm your host, John Beckwith Jr., and I'm joined today by the pastor, A. Louis Eton, of the Church of Living God, Temple 280. Blessings on you. We have our chief field director, Mr. Kevin Haynes. Hello, everyone. We have our sister and chief financial officer, Ms. Carolyn Haynes. Hello, everybody. And the pastor, M.T. Body Jr., of the St. John Baptist Church of Hillsboro, Texas. Praise the Lord, everyone. All right, today we come from Genesis, the 50th chapter and the second verse. Dr. E. Tommy, read that for us. The word of God says, and Joseph commanded his servant, the physician, to embalm his father. And the physician embalmed Israel. All right, today we're going to talk about how the funeral home industry has evolved. Now, Carolyn, that's amazing that we have came that far from biblical days to where we are now. Mm -hmm. uh, the Bible speaks of a physician embalmed mm -hmm. his father. Whereas today we have professional embalmers. embalmers. Uh, that's a long ways. It is, John, but I think the, it still stands for almost the same thing, the physician, because it's kind of surgery. Okay. And our embalmers today do some sort of surgery in embalming. There are certain areas that we have to cut in order to get the fluid in the body. So it still refers almost to the same thing. The name has just changed. Isn't that something <laughs> that evolved? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the funeral industry has evolved. Mm -hmm. She says maybe the names have, have changed. changed some. <laughs> and I'm thinking maybe the physician, uh, Kevin, perhaps doubled as a physician as and well as an embalmer. Because if he was familiar with the anatomy of the body, he probably could do both. Of course, because anatomy is a part of the embalmer's course of study. So, you know, the physician would study anatomy and the embalmer studies anatomy. Now, I don't know many physicians now that actually embalm bodies. <laughs> I, I know quite a few. Most of them know very little about what we mm -hmm. actually do. But it has evolved right. over a period of time. Now, Pastor Body, uh, you kind of help us. I know you're a historian. Help us out where funeral industry really came into play in America. Well, Brother John, film uh, industry came into play a uh, little bit after the Civil War. Okay. Uh, because during that time of the Civil War, so many soldiers uh, had lost their lives on the battlefield. Mm -hmm. And they had to get them back to their families. And they had to have a way of preparing the body to be transported back to their loved ones. So it's back during right about the Civil War time when the film business began its uh, appearance here in time. So that, that's where you really saw funeral homes. And that's when people really started reaching out to funeral homes. Because, Carol, we had a war before the Civil War. Uh, we had the War of Independence uh, back in the 1700s. But the people didn't have to go very far to fight. Right. Kevin, they were right there in the same oh, area, right, right there, there the on the area. eastern seaboard. Mm -hmm. So the bodies didn't have to go very far. But, Carolyn, when those people in the Civil War, they left. Well, and right. They went from state to state right. fighting the war. And these bodies had to get back, as Pastor Body said. <laughs> You had to go to your local funeral home to get your loved one back. Exactly. They had to get in touch with the local undertaker so that they could come prepare the soldiers and then get them ready to go back to their family because it's very important to the military that if you do pass away while in war, that they want to get you back home. Want to get you, you back home. You left to come fight for your country. That's the last thing they feel they can do. So they make sure you get back home. No one left behind. No. Even right. back in Civil War days as well as today. today. Evolved. <laughs> Evolved. Bodies had to be embalmed yeah. in order to be transported. They, the body needed to be preserved. Ice wouldn't have held them as long. The ice may have melted because now we're talking about horse and buggy. Mm -hmm. Travel took a very long time. How did they embalm the bodies then during war? Well, they had a technique that we know as field embalming, okay. where they actually did the embalming process right there on the scene where they passed away. And then they were prepared, you know, for transport 
on the, uh, you know, well, they use a horse and, and buggy for in most instances. So the person comes to the field yes. and prepare the body right, right there where the person passed away, hopefully mm -hmm. away from the shooting and the <laughs> bombing, <laughs> and the body was prepared right there. And then the body was either transported by horse and buggy or by train, by train. back yes. to their loved ones. That's interesting. Why, why was it so important to get those bodies back to their loved ones, uh, Pastor? Because the family had needed it to say goodbye. That's important. That's very that, that important. That was important back in Civil War right. days. It is important now. And it's even, how has it really evolved? That's interesting. <laughs> so, so what is it that made people start thinking that they could see their loved ones? What, what happened, Pastor Body, that America starts saying to people, listen, I, my, even if my loved one passed away many miles away, I could still see them at home. Well, when Abraham Lincoln was assassinated. The president. The president. Mm -hmm. They uh, took his body on a tour. Okay. And they went from state to state, town to town, allowing uh, the American to view the president's body. So not just for his family. Not just for his family. So this is when we started understanding public viewing was important. Yes, because sir. everybody felt connected to the president. Mm -hmm. He's not just the president of his family, he's the president of the entire nation. Right. And everybody got the opportunity to come and say goodbye to him. That's right. That's and great. they got to see a body. Yes, sir. Carolyn, that was prepared. <laughs> hmm. That had been embalmed. Right. And they say he looked pretty good. He had passed away a long time ago, you know, and then sometimes we have services that are held out for maybe a week. But we're talking maybe months since he passed away and they were still able to see him. And they saw how important that was, and they said, oh, that's great. Let's do that for everybody. And that's when the funeral industry started again to evolve. So when we start looking at that, uh, Kevin, we, 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 look, we say, man, that's interesting. That if the president, we think enough of the president to get him embalmed and preserve his body so that America can see him. My loved one is just as important as the president. <laughs> so now I want mine em embalmed. So you talked about the embalmer coming to the field during war. What if my loved one passed away at home? What happens? Well, that uh, undertaker came to your home and took care and took the necessary steps to do the embalming there. At your home? At the home. That's how it has evolved back. Yes. In those days, the <laughs> embalmer came to your home and embalmed your loved one at your home. house. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to help me with this, Kevin. How did he, what did he do with the blood? What did he do with the things he had to remove? in order to preserve the body. Well, uh, those things, fluids and those natures were collected in jars and then disposed of, you know, in that manner uh, because there was no, you know, it, during that time there's probably no uh, plumbing, system, plumbing or system or anything uh -huh. like that. So it was collected in jars and then disposed of, you know, once everything was done. Bomber will come to your home. He would embalm your loved one in your uh -huh. home, mm -hmm. collect the things he took from the body mm -hmm. and took with him right. yes. and disposed of them. Elsewhere, so he did everything in your, in your home. home. That's evolving. We don't do that anymore, do we? <laughs> no, sir. No, sir. Now, now, now we go and pick up your loved no, one, and we bring, bring them to the funeral home. home. We put them in the embalming room. preparation room, mm -hmm. and we prepare the body at our funeral home. That's a big difference from that's, what we used to do there. That's a big difference, and the, the thing is, it's it's more convenient uh, now to have it done this way, and then. And you don't have family running in and out. <laughs> what you're doing. A little more privacy. Little okay, more privacy. That makes yes, a big sir. difference. Now, Kevin, we have machines now that help us with the embalming yes. procedure. We, we have many different things, many different fluids that have evolved and uh, helped with many different parts of the body. But back then, how did they embalm the body without machines? Well, they had uh, manual machines like a uh, hand pump okay. or either what we call a gravity body, a uh, uh, gravity bottle mm -hmm. where it's, it's raised in the air and the fluids is able to come down into the body to preserve it. Uh, but now we have uh, electronic machines uh, with gauges that actually you know, tell us how much and, and how fast the fluid is going in. Uh, we have different types of chemicals depending on the condition of the body that we use. So it's, it's, it's really evolved. It's really evolved. It's interesting, uh, Pastor Body. I don't know if they were smarter than we, we, we were, <laughs> but that was amazing how they was able to do that with a lot less than what we have today. Mm -hmm. So if I wanted a certain amount of pressure to be injected into the body, 
Now I just turn the machine to the pressure I wanted. Right. But back then he had to measure how high to put that gravity bottle. Yes, sir. He had to decide how hard to squeeze that <laughs> pump. That right. pump. Isn't that something? That's something. We may have evolved, Carol, but it looked like they worked a lot harder. <laughs> <laughs> well, that comes also, John, from where people used to make all of your dinners by scratch. Okay. And now we just open a box, we open a bottle, we put it in a microwave. <laughs> so that's kind of the way it evolved also with the embalmers back in that day. Um, my ex-mother-in-law used to tell my kids mm -hmm. all the time, you just use a pinch of this. And now we actually have measuring spoons, measuring cups. Things have evolved. The so the film industry needs to, to evolve, evolve as, as well. well. Yes, sir. Now, <laughs> we, we talked about embalming and how that has evolved. And we talked about the people passing away, and we had mm -hmm. to put them on trains or on buggies. But now, if I pass away in another country or another state, how fast can you get me here? Well, Brother John, uh, it's just a matter of making a phone call. Okay. And we could call and set up. If you're in another country, if we need to call airlines, find out how much it would be to get you transported back here. Uh, if we have to go for, to another state, we could either drive or have you bought to us from the other state. So it happens. Pretty, pretty fast. fast. Pretty fast now. Pretty fast. Uh, if I drove to California, it would take me an entire day. Mm -hmm. If I rode a horse and buggy to California, my <laughs> Lord. that's a long time. That's a long time. If I fly to Los Angeles, it takes me about three, three hours. hours. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas if I was on a horse and buggy, now we're talking about maybe two or three weeks. Right. Mm -hmm. Times have really changed. And that made the fuel industry evolved. Mm -hmm. And change as well. Okay. Now, Carolyn, what about the caskets? Has that evolved over a period of time? Most definitely, John, because we still sometimes watch the westerns and we see the pine box. Okay. So it started out as being wood caskets. And the local furniture makers actually were the ones that provided the caskets to the funeral directors in that time as well as the embalmers. So, Kevin, if I am a furniture maker and someone lost a loved one, they just came to me and said, hey, my loved one passed away. I need you to build him a, a casket. casket. So, and this mm -hmm. is what we kind of seen on the Western days. A guy comes out there with the measuring <laughs> with tape. The right. mm -hmm. As soon as you get shot or something, he goes out there and he measures you because he's going to go back in and get build the a box. Mm -hmm. That's right. And we knew that was the undertaker in those Westerns, but he also was the furniture maker. Yes. Mm -hmm. So people probably need more furniture back then than they needed caskets. Right. Population right. wasn't as high. Not as many people being uh, killed. Mm -hmm. So he couldn't just make a living from caskets, caskets. making <laughs> caskets. But yeah. that has changed. Right. Has. The population has become larger, more people have passed, and then people became full-time undertakers. Right. Yes. Now, where did that word undertaker come from? Well, undertaker means that person undertook the responsibility to prepare and take care of your loved one. So when we say this person is an undertaker, what we're saying is that person would undertake whatever needs to be done yes. and make sure it gets done. All, right. All of my employees at Golden Gate Funeral Home are undertakers. undertakers. I teach that everybody that works here has to be a undertaker, undertaker because whatever needs to be done, you need to do it. Do it. Do it. So mm -hmm. I think everybody can be called a undertaker, undertaker regardless <laughs> of your profession. Right. Mm -hmm. But that has evolved. It when is. you hear the word undertaker now, you think of a license. Right. Film director, is that? Film director. That's mm -hmm. a big difference, a mm -hmm. license. And bomber. And bomber, when you say undertaker. Mm -hmm. what, what's the difference between an undertaker back then, Kevin, compared to an undertaker today? Well, when, you, when we think of license. Well, that undertaker back then, he was doing it as a part time job, as you stated earlier. He was a full time, you know, furniture maker or anything, you know, something to that extent, who just took up that trade. But now, you know, we actually go to college. We go into specialized training with other funeral directors and embalmers, and we're regulated by, you know, our states and our, you know, and our local municipalities to get that license to take care of. Big difference. Hmm. Big difference. That's evolving. Mm -hmm. Now you're saying the government is coming into our industry mm -hmm. and they're yes. making sure you are licensed to do so. You're actually trained at a mortuary college oh, to yes. do so. Carolyn, that wasn't going on back then. <laughs> <laughs> that has evolved. Exactly. Yeah. There wasn't much schooling going on anyway. So, you okay. know, you just had that one little schoolhouse mm -hmm. and it was general education. Okay. But as again, as the world evolved, then if you were going to be something specialized, then you needed that training. So therefore they built the schools for mortuary science and the like. Colleges were there, but not mortuary, mortuary. colleges. Right. Mm -hmm. That's something that evolved over a period of time. time. Caskets, Carolyn said, uh, Chief, they were all made by wood. Yes. Now, only about maybe 30% of the caskets sold worldwide are wood. Now, most of them are metals. How did that evolve? 
Well, it just it came with time as the industry grew. Then, uh, you know, up north, there was a couple of casket companies who started using machines okay. to make metal caskets, and they're able to ship them all over the world. So there's, you know, not much, you know, need or call for the the wood caskets anymore. They're still nice uh, because they're made, you know, from different species of wood and everything, and you know, but that's where we are now. It's just evolved to that level. So now we have the machines making the caskets. Yes. Not as many made by hand. And whereas a wood casket or a wood box would have been cheaper, somebody else say, just throw me in a pine box. Mm. Wood can get pretty expensive now, now because now when I hand make something, you're really going to pay the difference. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing good about a wood casket, you never make two alike. Because right. 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 there'll never be two trees that grow identical. Right. Right. So therefore, the species are going to be different as well as the make and the rings that comes with the mm -hmm. tree and right. so far and so on. Whereas a metal casket, because it's made by a machine and because it is metal, uh, Pastor Body, they are identical. Right. Things have really changed. Mm -hmm. Even back then, they had hundreds and hundreds of casket makers because they couldn't make a casket and transport it to yeah. another place. Right. Took too long. We're talking mm -hmm. about how long a horse and buggy <laughs> take. Yeah. Now they can make it and fly it Everywhere. or drive it in a short Distance of period time. of time. Mm -hmm. And that has evolved with caskets. Mm -hmm. Do you still like that handmade wood type casket? Well, Brother John, I, I'm really fond of metal caskets. Okay. <laughs> I prefer a metal casket over wood, as beautiful as they are, especially the mahogany casket, mm -hmm. which we know that's the top of the line of, of wood that can be found in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm more fond of a metal casket. Uh, I like how it shines and it comes with what I call the bells and whistles, the velvet interior, the adjustable bed, the locking mechanism, and it uh, helps preserve a little bit more. Th that makes a big difference, hmm. uh, Carolyn, because with a wood casket, uh, they was unable to put the protective seals around it and what they call gasketed mm -hmm. seals now. Um, whereas metal, we could talk about protection of the deceased person and not allowing water and things like that to get yeah. to the deceased. That was important. It was, John. And like you said, it started out with furniture makers. So, of course, they weren't able to mold, especially the precious metals. Now the caskets are made out of, you're right about the time, consuming part of it as well. And then we mass manufacture the metal caskets. So it makes it easier. But just like everything else, just like I was talking a moment ago, everything else now is fast. And metal caskets, you can do fast. Mm -hmm. They used to have the embalming in the house, Chief. <laughs> they had the funeral in the house. Yes. They had the viewing in the house. Now we have funeral homes <laughs> yes. that you come to. We is that what that word? Parlor came from? Parlor from <laughs> yeah, the, the word parlor, you know, that's, mm -hmm. uh, that's just a room that was uh, put together for entertainment purposes, really. Okay. So it's, we know it as our living room. Mm -hmm. And thus, you come up with the name parlor. You had beauty parlor, you had ice cream parlor, and now we had funeral parlors. And that was usually done, you know, in the home. And whereas the body was laid out in the home, mm -hmm. now they use the funeral home. Oh. home. We have evolved from that. Yeah. Uh, we, we tell people all the time, we can still take you back to your home. And in some cases, we still do. Right. Mm -hmm. we, we own a horse and carriage because some people want to go back to where it was. And we mm -hmm. sell wood caskets because some people mm -hmm. appreciate things right. being yeah. handmade. But right. whatever your choice is, we want you to make that choice, don't we? Yes, sir. What's the best way to do that, mm -hmm. Pastor Eton? The best way to do it is pre-need. You pre-need. You pre-need. So if you want to say, hey, I, I remember those days, or I, I watched those days on television, I mm -hmm. want to go back. I want my casket made like they used to do mm -hmm. it. And I, I want to ride in a horse and buggy like they used, used to do it. In. Mm -hmm. You can have that happen. Yes, sir. If and you pre-need it. If you pre-need it. The only thing you have to do is just come in and just fill out the paperwork and let them know what kind of service you want, what kind of casket you want, what kind of transportation you want. You and, can make that happen. And what's so great, Golden Gate can provide all of this for you. Kevin, if I want my wake at my home, not at a funeral home, I want my service in my parlor, in my <laughs> formal <laughs> living room, not at a church, can I pre-need that? You sure can. Uh, I had a discussion, you know, I, I may have told you about it with my neighbor who wants to be laid out in his home. And he, he brought me to his home and showed me the exact spot. Where he wants to be. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Carolyn, things have evolved. They have. <laughs> um, it Something. wasn't as expensive back then as they are now. We wasn't making as much money now. Well, can I pay for this ahead of time? Most definitely, John. That's what the pre-need allows you to do, is to pay today's cost for a future funeral. And you can budget the way you need to budget. There are some things all of us need to budget. 
So each month we need to know exactly what we have to spend and what we need to spend it on. The pre-need allows you to do that. Allow me to do that. Yes. The emotional part is gone, Pastor Body. My family mm-hmm. don't have to come in and figure out, oh, this is a beautiful horse and carriage Golden Gate has parked out front. I wonder if Mama would want to ride in that. Mama can make that decision herself. Mm-hmm. She yes. can take that emotion. You know, Golden Gate Funeral Home has these brand new Lincoln Town cars. We have these brand new XTS Cadillacs. I wonder which one Mama would want to ride in. You can make that decision yourself. Yes, you can, Brother John. I, I thank God I knew uh, my mother loved Lincolns. Okay. So if something was to, if God was to call mother home now, I know I have to request the Lincoln fleet because exactly. that was the car that she loved. And I'm glad that Golden Gate has the options of Cadillacs and Lincolns to offer to the public. And uh, you she can do that by pre-needing. You can freeze it. If you want to request the Lincoln fleet, get a pre-need, take that emotional stress off of your family. Where you don't have to come in and say, I wonder if, I wonder what, I maybe should, I would have, could have. None of that would have to take place. Those emotional decisions are over for you. They're family. out of there. Right. Carl, you know what's really changed is cemeteries. We mm-hmm. talked about how film business evolved. <laughs> people were buried on their own land. Own property. And we still do that today. A lot of people watching right now is probably saying, I can't believe <laughs> I can still be. Yes, you can be buried on your own property with proper permits. Exactly. That's the way it was done. It has evolved where people all gathered together in the cemetery, but you don't have to have it that way. Put that in your what? Put that in your pre-need and let your family know exactly what your wishes are. And you're exactly right. We will take you wherever it is you want to go. And while you're alive, we'll be able to check with the area where you want to be buried at your home, get all the proper permits so there's no surprises. Mom wanted to be buried in this backyard. But then family comes in after she's passed away, and the city says no. So, so we allow that to happen. We can get ahead of that. We can yes. start working on your mm-hmm. financial part, the emotional part, as and well as wishes. your wishes. Right. That allow us to do that now. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's what we call a pre-need. Need. Leave something behind. Hmm. And I know funeral industry has evolved, but also prices has evolved for college, for our vehicles. For houses, right. things have evolved, and there need to be some money in place. How do we tell people to leave something behind? Chief? You need a nice size life insurance policy, and don't spend it on your and don't spend it on your funeral. Okay. <laughs> hmm. Well, what, what, what should I use that insurance policy for? You should use that insurance policy to leave behind to your loved ones if you have children, so that you can set up for their education, for their food, their shelter. You know, whomever they're going to, you know, be staying with who's ever cared, they're going to need funds to take care of them. So that insurance policy and that pre-need need to go hand in hand? Y- yes, sir. Because I hear some people say, I don't need a pre-need because I have insurance. <laughs> I don't need insurance because I have a pre-need. We're telling you you need what? Both of them. You need both. Yes, sir. You need what now? Need both Need both of them. <laughs> 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 and we can't say that enough. Right. Pastor Body, we say everybody need a wheel. Why yes, does sir. everybody need a wheel? I mean, we got the financial part taken care of. We, we got our insurance in place. We got our funeral taken care of, our wishes, our hearts and carriage, whatever we want. Why do I need to leave a wheel? It, it eliminates chaos and confusion. Okay. It eliminates your family from fussing and fighting over materialistic things. In other words, it keeps peace and harmony. Mm amongst the family at a difficult time. Hmm. Because nowadays we see people who come up and say, well, mama said I could have this, well, mama said I could have that. That will will leave those instructions on who gets what. Uh, as as Miss Haynes often says, uh, once you put it in writing, your wishes speak louder than anybody else's. If you spoke loud while you were alive, speak loud while you're deceased. Carol, that's a big difference, yes, isn't it? Yes, it is. Because I know our mother spoke Loudest. All the time. <laughs> in life. And in. As and well in. as in death. Yes, and did. That's all we're saying, Kevin. And it's so, di- it, people make it seem it's so difficult to do a wheel. How is it, how easy is it to do a wheel? You just simply pull out a sheet of paper and you just write it down. Get it notarized and witnessed and put it in a safe place and let someone know where it is and make several copies. <laughs> <laughs> While I'm watching this show, <laughs> all I have to do is write down my wishes. Mm-hmm. Yes. I get it notarized. And Carolyn, what they're notarizing is my signature, right? right? right. They're exactly. not notarizing what I said. Is as notary, no- that's not what they do. As a notary, we never read your document. We simply ask you, is everything in here true and correct in the way that you want it? So that it, it will be, sometimes it's still disputed in court, but the judge then looks at your signature, looks at the notary signature. Sometimes the notaries have to come to court. And those are the questions that we are asked. And the notary saying, this is your signature. Right. This was your wishes. Mm-hmm. And we say, get it witnessed. Right. Mm-hmm. So not only is a notary coming, which is normally a stranger, 
But then there's someone that's not in the wheel right. that witness to say this is yes. how much does that cost? At Golden Gate Funeral Home, John, we don't charge you anything to get it notarized for you. And we have several staff members available for the witness as well. No charge. No charge if you want us to witness your will. Yeah. Hmm. Now, if you can afford an attorney, should you get your attorney passed by? Most definitely. We do recommend that if, you, if there are some things that you need to put in legal aspects, we do recommend that you do get an attorney. Get an attorney if you can afford it? Yes, sir. There's nothing wrong with attorneys. Nothing I know everybody got attorney. bad reputations, but if right. you can't afford one, you can do it yourself. Yes, sir. And now, it's right a ahead. simple uh, procedure. I, I really didn't think it was that simple until one day you had us to write our own will. Right. And man, that was so, I said, wow. I didn't, I thought it was going to take a whole lot of time, but it just took a good pen and piece of paper. And it didn't take <laughs> long it at didn't all. didn't take long. And it worked out just, just fine. Just fine. Just fine. Carol, a lot of things have evolved. A lot of things have changed. But what hasn't changed is that most funeral homes in America are still family-owned and operated. We have a couple of big companies out there that has purchased quite a few mom and pops. And they, they won't change the names, Chief. They try to fool us. <laughs> but overall, most funeral homes are still family-owned. We brag about that. Because yes, most people mm -hmm. think when you're large, like Golden Gate Funeral Home, that we're no longer family-owned and operated. Let's talk about that. Most definitely, John. Uh, John and myself are there every day, all day. Our dad still advises us. So <laughs> from the day that he started it till today and in the future, we're even training our next generations. We want to remain family owned and operated. So the Beckwith family owns Golden Gate Funeral yes, Home mm -hmm. since the beginning of time right. till the yeah. end, of, end time. of time. It is still owned and operated. And at this point, our founder and owner is still there. Yes, mm -hmm. he is. It buys. Golden Gate Funeral <laughs> Home has never sold out and never will. 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 That, that goes a long way. Does that yeah. go a long way? Do you want to spend your money with a family owned and operated business, Pastor? Yes, I will. Yes, I do. And yes, I have. <laughs> <laughs> You think that makes a difference when a person that's servicing you live in your community and they care about you? Most definitely, because you have that personal service. You're not mandated by any corporate policy. You know, if, if we need to change something, we can change it right on the spot. We don't have to have a big board meeting. We don't have to answer to any kind of shareholder. We can make that change. So and if make that it work customer come in and right say, hey, now. I need this to change, it, it, changes. it changes. And remember to watch Ask the Undertaker every Saturday night right here on Channel 47.2 at 7 o'clock p.m. And you all know my favorite. The radio, radio show. show. Every Saturday morning from 10 to 11 o'clock a.m. And that's on Heaven 97. That's 970 a.m. on your dial. We have changed our time for Channel 21. We're now moving to 6 o'clock a.m. Oh, right. Don't have to get up so early. We used to be at 5.30, but now we're at 6 o'clock a.m. every Sunday morning on Channel 21. Of course, check us out on GoldenGateFuneralHome.com. May God bless you and may God keep you is our prayer. We are stepping up the level of our services. Our goal is to treat your loved ones with the respect they deserve. We are taking our services to new life. We are stepping in a new direction. Step into the new millennium with Golden Gate. Where service begins, 